So this was something I scavenged for free because someone just didn't claim it. I am a vulture. Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. Okay, so today I'm gonna do some thrift flips and simple alterations with this bag of stuff that has been sitting in the corner for over two months now. Yeah, it's the stuff that I pulled out when I did my last decluttering and I've been slowly picking away at it, but I just I think I need to do like a big push to get as many of them done this weekend as I can, which might not be that many because I'm actually really slow at sewing. So yeah, I'm gonna try to give a little bit more detail with each of these projects just in case it's something that you find yourself also wanting or needing to do. And sorry I didn't post last week. I didn't feel like it. I have absolutely no energy right now. I have stuff I want to do. My body doesn't want to do it. So, you know, I'm dragging it along, kicking and screaming because we need to get some stuff done. There are some days when it's like I have no energy and I need to just like not do things, but then there are some days that I have no energy that I think it helps to do things just slowly. And I think today is one of the latter. So let's see how much I can get done before I lose daylight. So I'm starting with this dress that is just a little bit too loose under the arms. The armholes just fit a little bit too baggy. So first I put it on inside out and pinned where I wanted the armholes to sit. So before I just went in and sewed up those armholes, I detached what looked like bias tape that was used to finish the armhole. So once the binding around the armhole is detached, I went ahead and adjusted my marker pin and moved it up a little bit and then I added a few more pins going down at an angle and then I went ahead and just sewed a straight stitch down, angling it slightly so that it joined with the side of the dress. At this point, it's good to try on the garment to make sure that you like where the darts sit and see if you need to make any adjustments. But if it's all good, then go ahead and trim off the excess fabric. I did this with my serger because, well, you don't, you really don't need to use a serger for this, but you know, I spent enough money on it, so I might as well get some use out of it. And this next part was a bit tricky. So you wanna trim off the excess binding for the armhole and leave just enough so that your pieces overlap a little bit. And then I spent probably the better part of half an hour just fussing with it and trying to get the pieces to overlap correctly and, and trying to get the armhole of the dress tucked into the seam binding. And it's kind of just one of those things that you gotta play with it until it's all tucked away nice and neat. But once you do have it tucked in in a way that looks neat and tidy, you want to just do a straight stitch over that to keep it in place. So I made sure to follow along where there was already a top and bottom stitch on the seam binding that was in place, um, just to keep it looking uniform. And that'll just keep everything looking nice and neat. So this one is a pretty subtle change overall. I honestly don't know if you're gonna be able to tell because honestly, at first glance, you really, you really can't tell. But I feel a difference. It just sits closer to my underarm. I mean, the bra still shows. I think that's just kind of the cut of the dress and also the sports bras that I tend to wear. So it's really subtle, but I think it does make an improvement. It is a baggier, loose fit overall, but I just didn't like how super baggy it was around the armpits and that has been remedied. So very subtle change, but I think it was worth it. Let's move on to the next thing. Next up is this pair of jeans that is just a smidge big around the waist. Like it's not a full size too big, but it just keeps sliding down every time I wear them. So I'm going to try the elastic method to take these in a little bit. I started by making two holes along the back of the waistband on the inside, slightly to the side of the belt loops. Then I cut a piece of elastic that was a little bit shorter than the distance between the holes. I didn't actually measure how much elastic I cut, but it probably was about an inch or two shorter. I then attached a large safety pin to either end of the elastic, and then I started to push one end of the elastic through the back of the waistband and secured the other end to the opening. Before I got started sewing the elastic in place though, it was very important to change out my needle. I bought these needles specifically for sewing denim and similar materials. This definitely makes the whole process a lot easier and reduces the risk of damaging your machine or breaking needles and any unfun things like that. 
So starting with the left side of the elastic, well, I guess technically it's the right side of the pants, but the way I'm looking at it, it's the left, so we're saying left. So starting with just a little bit of the left side of the elastic peeking out, I tucked that little extra bit into the hole completely, and then I secured it in place by sewing a straight stitch along the innermost side of that hole. So it should be the side that is closest to the middle of the back of the jeans. And then finding the safety pin that was still attached to the right side of the elastic, I finished pulling it all the way through the back of the waistband and secured the right side down in the same way. Once that last side was sewed in place, then I tucked in the extra on that side as well. The last thing to do is close up the holes and you can kind of do this however you want. I just used a random scrap of embroidery thread that I had on hand and it doesn't matter that it doesn't match because no one's going to see the inside of the waistband. So I will admit I'm not the biggest fan of elasticated waistbands. I mean they definitely are the most comfortable, but they do also have a higher tendency of looking frumpy, and it's not my favorite way to take in jeans, but I think for something that only needed a little bit taken in, this was the right solution, just because there wasn't really enough that I needed to take away from it to warrant cutting away fabric. I think this is a good subtle change as well that in the future, if I need to take it out because I gain weight or whatever, then that'll be easy enough to do and I can still wear the pants. Really good if you just need to, oh, I can't keep my sweatshirt out of the way, come on. Really good if you need to just take in a little bit from your pants, but it's like not a full size worth, you know, it really just needed like, I don't know, half size. That's the thing I run into a lot. If it fits over my butt and my thighs, then it's usually too big around my waist, but if I go down a size, then it's just way too tight, so I might actually try the elastic with some more pants that I have. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of how it looks, but it is very functional. And this just feels so much better. It doesn't, obviously it's falling down a little bit, but you know. Gravity. But it doesn't feel like it's just constantly sliding down like it did before. It just, that's so much better. Cool, next thing. Next up were these two tops that were just a little bit too long. I didn't really love the way that this length looked on me. So I started by marking with a safety pin approximately where I wanted the new hem to sit, and then I just hacked off the excess fabric. To finish the hem, I used the twin needle setting on my machine, which is great for finishing knits and stretchy fabrics. I totally forgot to film the part where I flipped under the hem of each shirt and pinned it in place, which is kind of important because for this setting, you're actually going to sew it with the right side of the fabric facing up, rather than the wrong side facing up like you usually would. I guess technically you could sew it the other way around, but this way you get that nice double line on the outside of the shirt and the zigzag that is a little bit less pretty is on the inside. I'm still a bit of a noob when it comes to sewing knit fabrics, um, and this is no exception, so it did get a little bit stretched out at the hem. I don't think I quite had the tension setting right, but it's close enough considering it's just a casual t-shirt that I'll probably just be wearing around the house and around summertime. I'm thinking if I give it a quick iron on the steam setting, that might help the fabric kind of rebunch. That being said, hemming it with the twin needle setting I think was the right move, and I like this silhouette so much better. Same goes for this one, it got a little bit stretched out around the hem because I don't entirely know what I'm doing, but it really doesn't look that bad and this is just a very casual around the house kind of shirt. I think it will shrink up a little bit next time I wash it or either iron it real quick. And again, I just like this silhouette better. I have mostly high-waisted pants right now, so this slightly cropped silhouette just feels better with those high-waisted pants, especially since I don't have to tuck them in and there isn't bulky fabric gathering here because that just like is an uncomfortable feeling and I just, I would rather have a slightly cropped shirt that I don't have to tuck in. Oh yeah, and this shirt, I think it's like a little boy's shirt, technically. This was a lost and found item from the last time I did a musical three years ago. Someone left it backstage, no one claimed it, so I took it home and then over the summer I did a reverse tie-dye with some bleach, and now I've cropped it and really made this t-shirt my own. So this was something I scavenged for free because someone just didn't claim it. I am a vulture. 
The last item I worked on was this pair of black corduroy pants that fit amazing around my thighs but had way too much fabric around the waist. So for this process, I was actually copying a tutorial from With Wendy. I'm sure she explains it so much better than I do, so I'll link her video down in the description. So after measuring how much fabric needed to be removed, I divided that measurement between two darts at the back of the pants that started above the pockets and would end right below the top of the pockets. And once again, I switched to my needle meant for jean-like material, and then I sewed along the diagonal lines that I had marked, tapering off as I got near the tops of the pockets. Um, I also made sure to reach inside the pants and made sure I was not accidentally sewing the pocket closed in this process. And actually looking back at this process, I really should have skipped sewing over the waistband portion and just sewed over the fabric of the jeans. Uh, you'll see why in just a second. So after the darts were sewn and I tried it on to make sure that everything fit okay, I started seam ripping the waistband away from the pants, and yes, this meant that I had to unpick the seam I had just sewn only where the waistband was though. Don't unpick the whole seam, just over the waistband. So I unpicked the waistband at the bottom where it attaches to the jeans and then also at the top where the inside and outside halves attach. That way I could flip it all the way open like this. Then lining up the outer half of the waistband with the jeans, I pinned it together so that it wouldn't move around and I opened it all the way up so that the dart line could be continued up just this half of the waistband. So then, with the inner portion of the waistband still flipped open and up, I sewed a line that would remove the same amount of fabric from that piece as well, and this stitch should kind of look like it forms a right angle with the first dart line that you sewed. And then after cutting away the excess fabric and cleaning up the dart line with my serger, which again, you don't have to do, I just like how it looks, I flipped everything back the way it's supposed to be and had to fuss around with it for a little bit to get it folded and tucked in nice and neat the way I wanted it. And lastly, I top stitched the waistband back down in place, making sure to follow the stitch lines along the top and the bottom. But we're not done there. <laughs> So once our darts and the new waistband were looking all clean, there was still the problem of the pockets, which were now poking out quite profusely. So to fix this, I unpicked the outside edge of each pocket and shifted it over slightly, pinned it in place, and then sewed it back down. This didn't get rid of the problem completely, but it's definitely gapping a lot less. Be really careful doing this though, because I accidentally made a hole in the back of the jeans that I now have to fix by hand. So the last item I had time for this weekend was these corduroy pants, these black corduroy pants. These were definitely a bit of a tricky thrift flip, a little bit of a tricky alteration process, something I've never done before, but I think it turned out pretty good. I'm less bloated now than I was last night when I was doing this. I feel like I could have taken in a smidge more, but also I was having trouble getting it up over my butt. So if I took the waist in anymore, that might be a problem. So it's still a huge improvement. I mean, there was like so much extra space before and now it's just a little wiggle room, which that's fine. We like a little wiggle room. This was definitely the most involved of all the changes I made this weekend, but I'm so happy with it. I, I think it turned out so good and I'm very excited to now be able to wear these and not just have like this huge pocket of gaping fabric at my back because that is such an annoying feeling. Now that I know how to remedy that, this is also something I will be doing to some pants, other pants that I have probably. So I was hoping, you know what, let me adjust the uh, height real quick. I was hoping to get around to this skirt this weekend, but I just didn't have time partially because these pants took so long But really I'm gonna do kind of the same process And I think this will be easier because it doesn't have pockets to adjust and I just think it looks so much cleaner than the elastic. I mean, this had way too much excess fabric for the elastic to really be the best option for it, I think. I think it would have been way too bunchy and bulky. So for pants that you only need a smidge taken in, I would recommend the elastic. For pants that you really need like three to four inches gone, at the waist, then I would say the darts is probably your best bet. So that's all I have for you guys this time. I'm sorry I didn't have 
more thrift flips to show you this time around. I really have just been struggling with my energy levels this past weekend and I'm glad I tried to work through it. I think that did help. I'm feeling a lot better today. And guess what the culprit was? freaking PMS. So stupid. Ain't life grand. I was worried I was getting sick though, and I'm very grateful that I'm not, so you know what? I'll take Aunt Flo over that. Sorry, that's TMI, but you know what? Only like 5% of people get to the end of the video anyway, so if you're still here, leave a little spool of thread emoji in the comments to let me know that you heard my way too much information. But I do have some cold weather style related stuff coming up so keep an eye out for that and if you're still here and haven't subscribed uh what are you doing go hit that button don't forget to also follow me on instagram where i sometimes post updates in between videos i'm really bad at social media i just it doesn't come naturally to me and i think that's okay but yeah i okay i really need to go so thanks for watching see you next time bye nope there's still a fuzzy on the screen